Imagine a future, one where cars don't produce pollution but are quiet and clean. One where cars run on alternative energy, perhaps electricity. Well, the future is here. Hi, I'm Larry Gilliard, and I'd like to talk about something that concerns us all, solutions to pollution in the city. Now, one solution, Robert, Robert. Stupid Walkman. Uh, Robert, I'm trying to run the class here. I'm sorry, does anyone have any batteries? Batteries, batteries. That brings us to our topic today, which is electric cars, cars that use only batteries for power. Batteries, just like the ones in my Walkman? Well, not exactly. But instead of me trying to explain the details, we should experience one firsthand. How? Well, since it's a nice day out, I've arranged for us to take a field trip to see some electric vehicles. So let's go. So, does anybody know anything about uh, electric cars? I do. Susan knows everything. Quiet. Well, tell us what you know. Well, the body's the same as any regular car, but instead of having to fill it up with gasoline, you use battery power, power instead. That's right. This allows it to drive clean and quiet without any exhaust emissions or odors. Yo, this car looks mad fat, G. English, Robert, English. He means it's a great looking car. So, where are the batteries? Well, they're right down there. Hey, this car sure uses a lot of batteries. Yeah, there are a lot of batteries here. Well, scientists are doing research right now to try to improve them by lowering the weight and shrinking the size and eventually making them more reasonably priced. So are these batteries any different than the ones we use every day? Well, the ones in this car are nickel cadmium, just like the ones used to power laptop computers, only larger. Some electric cars use lead-acid batteries, like the type used to start a traditional gasoline car, and some electric vehicles use alkaline batteries, like the ones found in children's toys. Researchers are working to develop more efficient, durable batteries using more exotic technologies, like sodium sulfur. Does anyone here use rechargeable batteries? I do. I used to buy regular batteries, but I'd have to buy new ones every month. So now I just use rechargeables and recharge them once in a while. Well, all the batteries in this car are rechargeable. See, after about 60 miles, the batteries need to be recharged. And then after a certain number of recharges, the batteries need to be replaced. Only 60 miles? That's not going to get me very far. That's true. But these cars really aren't intended for long distance travel. They're intended more for everyday local commuting and deliveries. That's what most people need to do every day. But gee, how do you run this ride? English, Robert, English. What he's trying to say is, how does the car work? Looks like any other car. That's because it is. It looks and drives just like any other car, except for two areas. Which are? Well, first, the accelerator. Yeah. See, when you step on it, the energy flows into the electronic controller. Not into a carburetor or some fuel injection system. There's no gas. That's right, there's no gas. See, the energy in the controller goes to an electric motor, which turns the wheels to go either forward or in reverse. By the way, does anyone know what regenerative braking is? <laughs> I didn't think so. Let's say you're stopping or speeding downhill. You know what you're doing? Breaking the speed limit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope not. Actually, you're putting power back into the batteries. You mean recharging? Yes, yeah, see, that's regenerative braking. See, when you're stopping or going downhill, the controller reverses the flow of the electricity. And puts energy back in the batteries. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, tell me about it. What else can this car do? Well, the same things any other car can do. And some things even better. For example, electric motors can reach maximum torque at the startup. English, teach. English. <laughs> Unlike a gasoline-powered car, the engine doesn't need to warm up to achieve maximum power. Also, there's no idle, 
So while you're chilling out in rush hour traffic, you're not emitting harmful gases or wasting gas. Did you know that the United States has 190 million cars and trucks? That's one third of all the operating motor vehicles in the world. One third? That's quite a lot. But gee, how's the ride? I thought you'd never ask. Come on, let's take a drive. <laughs> yes, let's go. Well, class, give me some feedback. Wow, that was the smoothest and quietest ride I've ever had. It was fast enough for city travel, but I'd rather have a car that drives like a Ferrari. I think you're missing the point, John. Yo, that ride was fat, G. <laughs> well, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. You know, there's so much pollution in our city. The noise, the smog, the fumes. Some days it even hurts my eyes to walk outside. We can't go on living like this forever. We've got to change before it's too late. Well, both the federal and state governments are trying to improve air quality. One way to help do this is through laws such as the 1990 Clean Air Act or the National Energy Policy Act. These are federal laws that help regulate air pollution. Now, such states as New York and California set emission standards, which limit the amount of pollutants that cars can release while they're being used. These standards help set goals for automakers to manufacture and sell low emission or zero emission cars, such as electric cars, by the late 1990s. But those cars are so expensive. And after just a few miles, you have to recharge. And recharging takes hours. And the electricity needed to recharge these cars still has to be generated by a power plant. So we're not eliminating all the, the pollution. So what can we do to make this technology more practical? Well, you, my mother's an engineer, and she said that prices would go down once we started increasing the production of these cars. And they're doing um, research on these batteries now to develop one that has a longer range and a faster recharging time. You know, someday we'll be able to plug our cars in at parking meters or electric recharging stations instead of gas stations. Wow, Susan, you really know your stuff. Like you said, electric cars aren't for everyone right now. And there's still a lot of work to be done before people start to buy them. But for people or companies that drive short distances, it just might be the pollution solution. Tonight, when I'm asleep, those batteries will be recharging. That means they'll be ready for tomorrow night, Saturday night. Hmm, maybe I could take it for my date with Cassandra. Every year, nearly 10 million New York drivers use nearly 7 billion gallons of gasoline to drive their cars, trucks, and buses. In 1991, over 2 trillion miles were logged by motor vehicles in the United States, creating nearly half of the pollutants that go into the air. Today's electric cars are on-the-road laboratories that will shape the future of transportation by cutting down on pollution, eliminating our dependence on imported oil, and informing the design for the consumers of tomorrow. I live down by Canal Street, so um, it's right by the Holland Tunnel, and there are always a lot of cars there and a lot of pollution. And when you're there every day, you don't really notice it. But one year, I went away to Colorado to go skiing for about a week or you know eight days, and so you're up in the mountains where the air is really nice and. And you don't think about it, but then when, you got, when I got back and I was walking to school the next day, I was waiting on the corner of Canal Street, you know, for the light to change, and I, I was almost having trouble breathing, and I really noticed how much pollution there is in the air, so. Well, I hope the electric vehicle is a, a success in New York City, so that way it would be a better place for everyone, and people can come here and enjoy themselves much, much more. 
This is a, one of the ways to prevent pollution, but it's not like the only way. We can't just like do this and then not recycle. Or we have to do many things to, to, to help the environment. I think that electric cars are great because, um, you know, there's a lot of pollution, especially in places like New York City and L.A., where, you know, you have, especially in New York City, when you have um, cabs all over the place where they just run like 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and there's so much pollution coming out of those. And if we had electric cars around, we'd drastically reduce the amount of pollution in the city.